Once, except for the birds, our skies were empty. Now, they're a crowded place. It's like chaos, but it's controlled chaos. Every day, 6,000 planes. My pride and joy. There's nothing we can't transport. And 600,000 people are in the skies above Britain. Guiding every plane is a hidden army of controllers. So we've got no option right now but to stop the rivals into Gatwick. Performing one of the world's greatest juggling acts. Unlike a computer game, you can't hit pause. They're coming. A place of adventure. <laughs> well, that was fantastic. Wonder. When you're up there, nothing else matters. And danger. The less you know what's in front of you, the better. It gives you a sense of space and freedom and a feeling that you're part of something bigger. Every boy's little dream. The sight of a 450-ton jumbo streaking across the sky inspires wonder in some. But for others, it's pure terror. The last flight I went on, when I was coming back from Spain, and I couldn't stop crying. 28-year-old Sarah Howley, who works as a civil servant, suffers panic attacks when she gets on a plane. The last time we went away was three years ago, and I feel like I'm now at a point where a child would have loved a holiday this year. It'd be great to get away, but I didn't want to get on a plane. Now Sarah might have found a solution. I'd just finished doing hypnotherapy sessions, and I just felt it wasn't working for me. And I kind of thought, there must be some other way of curing this. I mean, I've heard of people being cured. So I thought I'd go on YouTube to see if there was any sort of an expert in that field. And that's how I came across Christopher. So it says he's a breakthrough expert. He can rapidly and effectively take a client from extreme flying phobia to them booking their overseas trip with passion and excitement. It sounds good. <laughs> I suppose I was looking for this magic cure. And I feel like I might have found it. In an attempt to break through her fears, Sarah's booked a session in London. But she's got to fly to get there. It's one more flight. And if it's only one more flight that I have to do to be cured of this, then it's not too much to ask. I'm nervous because it's a pretty windy day as well. And I think what I'm most nervous, like what I get most nervous about is turbulence. And a windy day says to me that there's going to be a bit of turbulence. Sometimes it can be quite manic and she can be quite upset, but other times she can be really quite quiet. I wish I knew what, what to say or what to do, or I just I feel a bit helpless, really. Every time I get on a plane, the worse the fear gets. I'm thinking, you know, that's another flight that nothing's happened. So the next time, something's going to happen. How are you feeling? I get a little bit nervous. It's a bit, a bit real now. Proper fear really kicks in when I get to the airport. It's like a big knot in your stomach. You all right? Yeah. I suppose you feel out of control a little bit. You're putting your life in somebody else's hands. You're trusting them to fly that plane. Please place guaranteed cabin bags and smaller items under the seat in front of you. I see you, you'll be looking for a death flight. Let's <laughs> hope so. Back on the ground in London, Sarah's off to meet Chris, an integrated therapist who claims he can cure her lifetime fear of flying in one short Hiya. session. Hiya. I'm Chris. Nice How you to doing? meet you. Hey, I'm Sarah. Grab a seat. 
Now you focus on the tip of this pen. Just allow your eyes to go from left to right as you think about that event now. The treatment involves an unconventional blend of mainstream psychology and more experimental techniques. Be with it in front of us. OK. And we're going to expand our awareness so we can still see both fingers, but we're looking straight ahead, if that makes sense. And now I want to talk to the part that stores all your emotions. The aim is to uncover the key event that triggered Sarah's fear of flying. When I was at primary school, mm -hmm. thinking about going up to high school, it's change. Change. I don't like change. Fear of change. OK. Very often, it's not related to fear of flying at all. It could be a fear of control, it can be a fear of letting go, but the unconscious mind has made those two the same, and when you untangle one, often the other one will start to untangle and fall away. With me. Mm -hmm. Focus on that event. Just tap here. Even though I need to relax? Even though I need to relax. I totally love and accept myself. I totally love and accept myself. Notice what thoughts and feelings come up. Notice what comes into your awareness. Just lots of worry. People telling me I'm being silly, but... I just still can't forget it. Yes. Tapping on acupressure points claims to remove negative emotions. If you'd never gone to high school, what would you have not had? So if I hadn't went, I wouldn't have, yeah, I wouldn't have gained an education, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> and so when it comes to your fear of flying, what would you tell yourself? That future you that has got over it. Just relax and enjoy yourself and make it part of your holiday. Yeah. Make it an enjoyable part of your holiday, and it can be. It feels OK. It doesn't feel... <laughs> it doesn't feel bad. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. The true test will be Sarah's flight home. I just feel really, just feel really relaxed and the thought of the flight tonight, just, it's not really bothering me. How's it going? You all right? Yep. Yeah, I'm feeling fine. Looking forward to getting on the plane and reading my book. It's not bothering me at all. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. People at work bring these back when they've been on holiday. So I'm going to do it this time because I'm coming back from the airport.